Outlook a week ago when we were in Pittsburgh. Cincinnati and Pitt got us going last week. Today it is NC State and VMI, and there will be no return from the key depths. So VMI with a one and one record, a loss on the road at Bucknell last week in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. 21-13, they have two capable quarterbacks. The one thing I know, Bates, Colin is coming out of that huddle. <laughs> That's a pretty good bet, and it looks like it will be Colin Shannon, who has not started the game this year. He started two his freshman year. He was redshirted after playing in three games last year, but starts against Chattanooga and Furman and his first start of 23 now. Colin Ironside was the starting quarterback in the first two games for VMI. That's Rashad Raymond on the carry on first down, and it's just two yards. Peyton Wilson, number 11 in red, white, and black on the stop. Yeah, we highlighted him off the top, and you know, just about every snap, you'll want to know where number 11 is out there on the field, and certainly the Kedets will want to know where he is lined up across from him. Such a big playmaker and so much fun to watch. That pass complete near the 30. That is Aiden Twombly on the receiving end. He's a little bit short there by a couple of yards of the first down. They got six on the pass from Colin Shannon to Aiden Twombly, the senior from Waxon, North Carolina. And now third down for the Kedets. Yeah, quickly for that pistol look. Incomplete. Brings up fourth down. Looking for Twombly. You know, and Twombly had a little bit of space. And it looked like somebody got out there in that window and Colin Shannon didn't like it, so he, he adjusted and threw it behind him. So ball falls incomplete. And a, a little bit of noise made by the Kedets, but they'll punt it away to start things off. So a nice three and out for Tony Gibson's defense. And just the way they started last week. Started fast against Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish, they had two three and outs. And forced a fumble even that was recovered by Notre Dame. Jack Culbreth with the punt. That is Jalen Coit backtracking. Just beyond his own 15. Head of steam. 40-yard line and falling forward on the return by Coit. Punt was 50 yards. The return from Coit, 18 yards. Excellent field position for the pack on its first possession. Yeah, that'll add to what is already second in the ACC. Over 10 yards of return. To start things off for the offense. New sheriff in town when it comes to the play calling. And Robert and I, not just the guy who's slinging it around, and Brennan Armstrong, a duo that ACC fans saw quite a bit of up in Charlottesville in the last few years at the University of Virginia. Jordan Houston on first down. It's going to be a loss of one spirited effort by Dorian Starnes in the VMI defense on first down. Starnes just unblocked and going the wrong way on first down. VMI winning the first snap. Armstrong with the time escapes the pocket. And a scamper out of bounds just shy of the 50 yard line. He got eight on the run. Third and short now for NC State. He's run out of bounds by Rankin. Rankin, when you watch the tape on VMI, he really flashes. That linebacker spot for the key that's a lot like Peyton Wilson does for NC State. So here comes a big third and short on this opening drive. Hey, look him up. Armstrong look him up. used 10 different receivers in the loss last Saturday to Notre Dame. That's first down yardage, 45 yard line. KC Concepcion on the catch. Well, you need to know where that leading receiver is, and you need to know where they're trying to take. This football, where are they running those routes and breaking them off at? Right at the sticks in a nice clear play and a nice easy pitch and catch. Armstrong to Concepcion. Seven yards on the previous reception. Michael Allen will run it for three for the sophomore from Greenville, North Carolina. Both Allen and Jordan Houston. Very fast backs. They've got some fast ones. They've got some. Some bruisers as well, backing these guys up. Little toss, complete, 
inside the 35, and that's Penix. Very close to another first down. In fact, it is first down yardage, seven yards on the play. Well, welcome back, Trent Penix. He's dealt with the injuries, missed most of spring ball and, and fall camp. He's getting the start today. You know, it's, it's a position that we need to hear a lot more from here this season. Robert and I likes to use those tight ends, and he's moving Jacarius Peak actually from the offensive line over to that spot, trying to get some more depth there. Just two catches coming into the game for Penix to the ground. Allen trying to break the tackle, get inside the 30. Eric Rankin brought him down for VMI. That's a five yard rush. Still, so you'll take it on first down every time, getting those four or five yards just chipping away taking care of that football which is key today for VMI trying to turn it over Armstrong looking down the field underneath 25 yard line that's gonna move the chains on a five yard play to Michael Allen Rankin had the tackle uh, Rankin three tackles already on this opening drive and we're just hitting the 11 minute mark left in the first quarter Houston correction Allen on the catch down the sideline just inside the 20 yard line it's a four yard play Taj Summy forced him out of bounds Does it look Noel innocent does a good job of fighting off the would be blocker First of all, forcing, trying to force that ball back inside, but when he got the ball outside, breaking free of that blocker and knocking him down. Into the red zone for NC State. Last year, they were 10th in the conference in red zone scoring. Trying to make a move at the 15 and topple there. Concepcion on the grab. That's a five-yard play. Takes it inside the 15. Now third and very short, James, for NC State. Keep in mind, Brennan Armstrong is the leading rusher on this team. Entering this afternoon's game, had a couple of rushing TDs in the win against UConn to open up the season. Armstrong hasn't missed on this drive. Five for five to the ground. Up the middle, Mims has a first down. Inside the 10, first and goal, NC State on a six-yard run. Nice little read. That option was there. Read correctly, but that option's always there for Brennan Armstrong. You just mentioned it. Top rusher heading in, and he's done a lot of damage to ACC opponents throughout the years back at Virginia with those legs. You always have to account for number five's legs. And here it's a first and goal for the Wolfpack. The 11th play of the drive for NC State. Gray trying to turn that corner. Fighting for the goal line and coming up just short, Julian Gray got seven. Alex Oliver kept him out of the end zone. This is a nice job by Gray to dance around a little bit, make a couple guys miss as he had a couple guys on him early and leaning forward, almost taking it into the paint. It'll bring up a second down and just about less than one yard to punch it in for the first score of the afternoon. Mims to the goal line, fighting for it, and a touchdown! Delbert Mims, the TD, follow pack. Down low, and a good job by the Keydets to not go low. Down at that goal line, you've got to stand them up, hit them pad to pad. You go low, they're going to fall down over you into the paint. So they try to stand them up, but the low, the strong lower body of Mims, able to, that second effort, just keep churning and get into the end zone for the first score for the Wolfpack. And the second TD rushing of the season for Delbert Mims the third, the junior from Indianapolis, Indiana. Braden Narvison has the extra point. First possession, seven points for NC State. This is ACC football on the CW.
Matthew. First drive of the game for NC State. 12 plays. No play, James, was greater than eight yards on that drive. I would have come back with Tommy want wingy. <laughs> Tommy boy. I'll take a couple. <laughs> Cook them up. No return from VMI. All right, let's take a look at our impact players today. Brought to you by Walmart. Welcome to your Walmart. Yes, Chance Knox, number six, the wide receiver, a playmaker on the outside. And they're running the football throughout the day out of Newark, New Jersey. Rashad Raymond has been a force for the key that's here early this season. And again, they're taking handoffs and, and catching balls from a new quarterback. And Colin Ironside, a guy out of Knoxville, Tennessee, West Knoxville, Bearden High School. Not starting today, a little bit banged up, so it's Colin Shannon. Prior to the snap, false start, number 77 offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's our referee, Gary Patterson, as we take a look at today's impact players, brought to you by Walmart. Welcome to your Walmart on defense. Well, Devin Van up front, square and vertical and strong. All those defensive linemen got last week, finally. And Caden Fordham, Fordham, rather. Tony Gibson, who do we watch tomorrow? He said, watch Fordham, he's going to make plays. Hunter Rice had the carry. There is no gain. NC State, a season ago, the best of the ACC in scoring defense. They only allowed just over 19 points per game. Second in rushing defense and led the conference in interceptions with 19 last year. Shannon gets rid of it. That's Isaiah Lamond for three yards on the pass play. Nice throw and catch here. Shannon, the red shirt freshman, a, a completion, but also defensively. They'll let you have that all day long until they're scared that you're going to run by them. It makes things a little bit easier on the defensive side of the ball, third and long now. Just 38% of the season so far. Small sample size with the first two games and a one and one record for VMI. They face third and long. They call it third and 11. On the 24, Shannon's pass deflected and intercepted. Inside the 20 and the return, Robert Kennedy all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Now, this is going to be interesting if he hangs on to the football. Chance knocks right through his hands and right into the hands, unfortunately, for VMI of Robert Kennedy, and he knows what to do with it. You just mentioned all the categories that they led the conference in, that they were top 20 in the NCAA last year. I mean, so many, so disruptive and forcing turnover, such a big part of that defense. Well, when they force those turnovers, they give those dogs a bone. Give number eight a big one because he takes it back to the house. And preview the must-watch matchups in week two inside the NFL Tuesday, 8-7 Central, only on the CW. How about NC State? 14 points in the last minute, 20 seconds. Robert Kennedy with the 30-yard return off the interception for a touchdown. How about this series? They are meeting for the 20th time. Teams have not met in over 77 years. And the first meeting, 1895, Grover Cleveland was president. The Wright brothers in flight. And then television invented in 1927, just to give you some perspective on how far back this series goes between NC State and VMI. James, they have not played since 1946.
so far this edition of the series being dominated by NC State. That's a five yard pass play to Knox for VMI. <laughs> look, look who's right on his back. Robert Kennedy wants some more, doesn't he? I mean, he's, he's hungry now. It's, you know, it's like hitting in baseball. Heck, it's like it's like catching it's, it's the receiving crew in football. It, it's, it's contagious. You, you, you get a little taste of that blood and, and you want some more. Robert Kennedy right there on the spot, but a nice completion after the interception to VMI. Raymond wrapped up by Wilson. No gain. Yeah, you're going to need a little bit more friction on number 11 than just a little forearm. You know, one thing that stands out about Peyton Wilson's game, too, is he doesn't mess around with the big guys. There's offensive linemen trying to block him if he doesn't have to. And even in times when most linebackers couldn't run around blocks, he can because he's so athletic. Pass through the 35-yard line. That is cost. Aiden Twombly fighting for that reception from Colin Shannon. Nine yards and a first down. Well, it's good to see Colin Shannon come right back out slinging this football around. The interception wasn't his fault off the hands of the receiver. A couple nice completions here. And their first first down of the game as they're up near midfield. And Twombly, a nice big target you mentioned from North Carolina, went to Marvin Ridge High School and uses that bigger body to wall off the defender. He's setting up shop right at the sticks, and they'll move those sticks. Fresh set of downs. VMI rolled up 295 yards of offense in the loss at Bucknell a week ago. Swinehart on the rush. He got four. VMI, the game against Bucknell into the fourth quarter, was tied, James, 7-7 a week ago. Bucknell got the next 14 points, and that included a blocked punt return for a touchdown. Second down. That pass tips and incomplete. Looked like Wilson right up in the grill of Colin Shannon. Peyton Wilson saves a touchdown here. If Peyton Wilson doesn't get a hand on this football, look at him. He's not going to get to him, not going to make the play. He goes up, he mirror that quarterback and try to bat it down. He does just that because nobody was anywhere near Twombly. And that would have been six. Just a big time football player. A heady football play by Wilson. Here's your third down and six now. Five receivers set for Colin Shannon. Kedet's quarterback. Pressure from the edge. He got rid of it. And that's beyond the reach of everyone. That was Jalen Scott coming off the edge to provide pressure into the face of Colin Shannon. Fourth down. Good job by Shaheen Battle. Nowhere for Colin Shannon to go with that football, especially because he felt the pressure coming. He took the lick as he let go of the ball, but it'll hit the turf and forcing another punting situation. That wolf pack deep. Coit is deep. Wants the fair catch, makes it successfully up near the 18 yard line. How about getting the crowd fired up for this home game? Kevin Keats and Wes Moore, the women's basketball coach. Kevin Keats on the men's side, getting this crowd going on the CW. A smile on your plate. Bank of America, what would you like the power to do? And United Healthcare, there for what matters. NC State, Armstrong, incomplete pass. Through the hands of the intended receiver. Danny Rocco's VMI Kidets trailing 14 0. A TD run from Delbert Mims. And an interception return touchdown by Robert Kennedy. First time that NC State had done that since last season against Texas Tech when Aiden White took it back 84 yards for a TD after an interception. And this is Jordan Houston, just two. Wonderful job by the defensive end 
done. He comes knifing through the guy who won the Havoc Award in game one. And big number four, Christian Dunn. There in that backfield, the penetration just disrupts everything. So after the drop ball, after the incompletion, then you get a stop with the run. What are you going to do on third and long here now? Let's see if they just try to bring the three and let Armstrong stand back there. Armstrong delivers a strike near midfield. Julian Gray inside the 20. What a throw from Armstrong, and Gray takes it down deep into VMI territory. Julian upset he didn't take it all the way to the end zone. We've already had one number eight score. How about this ball throwing it over the linebacker? You just saw it done with the big play against the run, throwing it right over his head. Just on a rope, a beautiful throw from the lefty, Brennan Armstrong. And once again, the Wolf Pack is rolling. 64 yards on the pass play for the all-time leader of the ACC for yards passing by a left-handed quarterback. Back to the air, to the end zone. It's a touchdown. Caught in that back corner by Bradley Rosner. Well, I thought the first throw on this drive was, was pretty there. And this second one right here, even better. The touch on that ball, putting it right in the corner, dropping it into the hands of the fifth year, sixth year, the eighth year football <laughs> player in, in college, Bradley Rosner. Uh, quite a story right there. They're glad to have him in Raleigh. He's going to make big plays throughout this ball final ball. season in college ball. Second TD reception of the season for Rosner and Armstrong with his third passing TD of the year. 16 yards on the pass play, James. Well, let's take a couple looks at it. And again, good protection again for Armstrong. He just drops it right down in there. And the six foot four Rosner has no trouble going up and getting that one, high pointing the football and pulling it in. And it's 21 to nothing. And just as Coach Dave Dorn was telling Tabitha off the top of the game about playing complimentary football, one thing that he harped on when looking back at last week is we absolutely didn't play complimentary football. We played uncomplimentary football. The offense would have a little bit of a spark, but the defense wouldn't answer. Right now, here in this first quarter, they're feeding off of one another. They're bouncing back and forth. We've got defensive stops and defensive touchdowns. And by the way, we've got a couple offensive touchdowns and some good-looking quarterback play here early from Brennan Armstrong. Armstrong in the game now is 7 of 8, and that TD pass to Bradley Rosner. Graduate student, a transfer from Rice. Connecting with the transfer from Virginia, Armstrong. Fourth on the return. Driven back. 18-yard return for VMI. Live Golf returns to the CW next weekend in Chicago where Brooks Kepka, Phil Mickelson, Cam Smith, Dustin Johnson, and Bryson DeChambeau lead a team battle for $50 million in prize money. Live Golf Chicago next weekend, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on the CW. Back to the ACC football action, 21-0, the lead for NC State as we play in the first quarter. Pass complete along the sideline, first down yardage. Actually a ruling that the receiver, the Silva, went out of bounds, short of the lines he gained by about two and a half yards, so eight yards on the play. Julio De Silva. The senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on the catch. Colin Shannon at quarterback, seeing his first action of the season, starting the game for the Key Deaths. That's Raymond on the carry, making the trip from Lexington, Virginia, for Coach Rocco. Loss of two. Here comes third down. And a big one for Coach Rocco for 
his offense. Offensive coordinator Pat Ashford. An East Tennessee guy, just like a lot of his quarterbacks. And here's one right here from Sevierville, Tennessee, Sevier County High School. Trying to lead the key. That's down the field. Shannon's pass off the fingertips of the re receiver and nearly intercepted. Lamond is the intended receiver, number eight in white. And that's fourth down for VMI. Shaheen Battle got a piece of that one. It looked like it was going to be a, a first down on that first down play with the receiver stepping out. It turns out to be a, a three and out and should get pretty good field position here is Jalen Coit, one of the best returners around. From the neighborhood of the 30 yard line. Reversing field. Flags are out on the return near midfield. There are three penalty markers. Well, there are two back where the punt happened. So that one I'm guessing going to be a, a roughing of some sort on the punter. Let's take another look at that. And that's that is that's that's the the dangerous uh, of the two. And that's why they've got to protect those kickers That that leg a defenseless punter. There are two fouls on the play, both against the return team. Legal block in the box, back. Number 25, return team, that penalty declined. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Number zero, return team, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Our referee, Gary Patterson, sorting out those penalty markers for us. Well, in, in therein lies the rub when you've got everybody amped up, everybody stoked. Hey, we're making big plays. I, you know, I want to, I want to make my big play, make my my name right here, make my mark on this football game. But you've got to play within control. You got to play within the game. If it's not there, it's not there. Don't press it, and a little bit too much, a little bit too aggressive, and so it'll be another shot for VMI and Colin Shannon to come back out here and try to continue this drive. Just 36 yards of total offense so far in the first quarter. We are late in our first quarter. 20th all-time meeting between the programs. Next week, we're going to Winston-Salem for the ACC on the CW, Georgia Tech, and Wake Forest. Please join us next Saturday for more ACC football action on the CW. Thorpe trying to fight his way to the 40, doesn't quite get there. And there is no gain on the play with the ball at the 39. Darius Edmondson stepping up for the NC State D. Battle in the vicinity as well. You know, Darius Edmondson here, Tom, may not, may not be credited with the tackle. But he's going to come firing up as soon as he recognizes, boom, he's going to go upfield, get penetration, and turn that ball back into his buddies. Shannon on the rollout, missed fires, looking for four. You know, th those balls, like we saw on first down here, it's going to be tough to beat this Wolfpack defense, beat them to the edge, and get that corner turned like you saw a couple times with Notre Dame last week. More of that downfield throwing where they've had a little bit of success, but those swing passes and stuff are going to be tough to break big ones. This one could be offsides. One for five on third down for the key decks. There is no receiver in the area. The ball was intercepted by Fitzgerald. Here is a penalty marker. Offside. Defense, number 13, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. Trevally Price is number 13, sophomore. So another chance on third down for VMI against Dave Doran's defensive unit. And again, one for five on third down so far for VMI in the closing moments of our first quarter. 
Shannon felt pressure, got it away incomplete, and then hit the turf. Looking for Twombly. Fourth down, VMI. That's Twombly unable to come out of that route, and you got to think that's where he's trying to go. There's a hit up high. You got to be careful, Devin Van. No flag. And number one's going to pop right up. He's a smoky bear, Tom. Spear County High School. He's a tough guy. The redshirt freshman has to leave the field. Another punt now from Culbreth. Put to his right, will let it bounce. Inside the five, and VMI able to save it from going into the end zone. It's down near the one. 55 yard punt from Culbreth. All right, let's take a look at this afternoon's impact players brought to you by Walmart. Welcome to your Walmart with NC State on offense. Yep, welcome to Walmart. Welcome back, Trent Penix. Good to have him back, the senior from right here in Raleigh Sanderson High School. And Keon Lesane. Legal touching, four yard line, first and 10, four yard line. Keon Lesane is a captain, and this captain needs, needs to continue to lead this team, making big plays, and the rest will follow him, that's for sure. And today's Impact Players brought to you by Walmart. Welcome to your Walmart BMI on defense. Well, we've seen a very active number five from the linebacker spot, Eric Rankin. And needless to say, Oliver and the rest of that secondary are going to be busy here today. Trying to defend against Brennan Armstrong's arm and the receivers for the Wolfpack. But they got a long way to go. From their own four for NC State. Coming out of that backfield, barreling his way past the 10, Delbert Mims. BMI has not crossed its own 44 yard line in four possessions in that first quarter. Armstrong tucking and running. And he goes down beyond that 25 yard line. Chains are going to move on the run by Armstrong for 14 yards. Yeah, a nice read and a nice looking play right here. And good patience as well as he waits for the blocker out in front to take clear the way a little bit. And it's right back over it with the quick game. Keep it on the ground. That's a three-yard play. Helmet off 50 BMI. That's Tyler Swan losing his helmet. Stop looking at me, Swan. That's Billy Madison. Yeah, He'll be back in after one snap. Got to go fix that hat. Second and seven. Quick flip on the edge. Up near the 40-yard line, it's Collins. And that's a first down for NC State on the catch by Collins for 10 yards. He had a TD reception on his first catch of his career in that game against Notre Dame well, for Collins. And, and thanks in large part to Keon Lassane. Lassane doing a great job of just swallowing up the defensive back right there, blocking his guy to help clear the way. Little option look. And out of bounds beyond that 45 yard line. Trent Penix for seven yards. A couple of these little wrinkles here, you know, throw some stuff out there. It's a, it's a an ever changing script and game plan, and and not just game to game, but really season to season for Robert and I, who's just an outstanding play caller. What a get he was for NC State. Coach and I not afraid to mix it up. That's the Penix through the air. We love those conversations with the coaches who give us their time and they're so generous. And talking with Coach and I, third different team in the last three years for him, James. Yeah, and, and he's, <laughs> we joke because, you know, he's from the North Shore. He, he went to Kahuku. You know, just, just the fame. They, they send about 10 players every year to Division I schools. Just an incredible program. They're on the North Shore of Oahu, and he, he, he's not getting any closer to home, that's for sure, out here. Make it four for four on third down of the game for NC State as Mims powers forward for eight. Robert and I, who last year was the offensive coordinator at Syracuse and had such great success, especially in 2021 with Brennan Armstrong at Virginia. Yeah, Kahuku Red Raider for life, and you know, the good thing, though, about coming down here to Raleigh his son is the offensive line coach now at Campbell. 
So not far at all for him to go see his four granddaughters uh, so he can be grandpa when he has a chance, which isn't very often as a football coach. I know that. Armstrong has all day. Zips that one in to Michael Allen going upstairs to make the catch for five yards. When Dave Doran told us yesterday, Tom, we talked about it off the top of the show that we've got to concentrate on us. One of those things was fundamentals, looking the football and catching the football. They've only had one drop here today. They had too many, especially on third down last week. The receiver is quickly cut down. Concepcion had the catch. And Noel Innocent dropped him for a three-yard loss on the edge. Yeah, just a freshman, Concepcion, but dangerous when he gets his hands on that football so wisely and looking very good doing it. Innocent reacting, and getting up there, making the play, cutting the feet out of Concepcion before he can get his shoulders squared and get north and south. You see if they bring bodies this time. They're walked up like they're blitzing. you got to put some pressure on them. They'll bring three, though. Armstrong surveys the landscape, exits the pocket, looking for the marker, has to veer out of bounds. Couldn't quite get to the 35-yard line. Innocent forced him out after a five-yard run, and now the decision on fourth down, James. Yeah, I think I think you go for it. Your defense is playing some, some good football right now. They're not doing much to you, so you turn the football over right here. You got to think. Hey, we're not risking too much. I think this is an easy call for Robert and I on a fourth down and four. Let's see if he and I can get a stop. Armstrong wants to throw. Receiver adjusting to the football, making the catch. 25-yard line to Gary Collins. 12 yards in his second catch of this drive. Collins from Atlanta started his college football days at Clemson. And doing a good job of securing that one before he goes down to the ground and a good job by Armstrong but again he had all day long They've got to find a way to put a little bit of pressure on Armstrong left side breaking through Allen and stumbling inside the 20 Collins upholding the tradition of that number 86 worn by Emeka Amezi most recently here at NC State Mecca's joining us in the booth this afternoon, and he's all smiles. Watching NC State take it down the field again against VMI. Second and three. Yeah, it's weird having the Mecca up here rather than making the plays down there <laughs> on the field, but I kind of like it. It's been fun hanging out with him here today. Good to have you, Mecca. 13th play of the drive, trying to stretch it out. Allen makes a cut. Flag comes out. Didn't quite get to the 15-yard line, which is the first down. Yard marker to gain. Eller made the stop. There is a penalty marker. It's going to be a hold. And if it wasn't. Holding. Number 46. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. If this penalty wasn't called, did they hold just about every time? It's going to be right over here, right side of your screen. Boom, right there. There you're going to see the hold on number four done <laughs> and he, he's just he's grabbed and thrown i swear i was gonna Ameka wants to get into broadcasting i was about to get up and give him my headset and just go take a break <laughs> so i didn't say anything i'd get in trouble for over the air but they did throw the flag so you're okay right now Ameka. <laughs> approaching the nine minute mark in the second quarter nc stayed up 21 nothing that is complete concepcion down to the 15 very close to a first down for NC State, and it is a first down for the pack. Oliver on the stop of Concepcion. And this is why you have to react in a hurry on number 10. You got to get up before he can get those shoulders square because see how dangerous he is dancing in the open field? And speaking of a mezzi, hey, couple Charlotte guys, right? Huh? Yeah. Big time players coming over from Charlotte to play in Raleigh. That was 13 yards, and that pass play is broken up near the 10 yard line. Lassane was the intended receiver, Oliver the anticipation. Nice job to read this. Go break it up. And see that even that back arm is, is secure. The back arm right there, making sure if he does miss with that hand, he's, he secures the tackle. But a nice looking break there by Oliver to force the second down and 10. 
Armstrong had completed eight passes in a row prior to that breakup. Jordan Houston. That's only two yards for Houston, the senior from Waldorf, Maryland. We've got these fast backs in Allen and Houston. We saw the touchdown run earlier by Delbert Mims, that bigger body guy. Is that, that's the type over the years. Robert and I is always going to have one of those big, powerful bruisers like Mims, but he loves having the speed to play with as well. This is now the 16th play of the drive. The pass is incomplete near the five. Intended for Vereen. Well, Juice Vereen walks into the end zone if he catches this ball. And, you know, just when. My plan, the plan for fans. We're back in Raleigh, North Carolina. ACC football presented by Verizon on the CW. 24 0. Braden Narvison with a 31 yard field goal just moments ago. On a drive that went 17 plays. And took over seven and a half minutes. So we'll step aside when we come back. VMI has the football. It's all NC State so far in Raleigh. We're in Raleigh, North Carolina. On the CW, Tom Wormy, James Bates, a member of the 96 National Championship team in Florida. Tabitha Turner is on the sidelines for us, and there is no game. Well, spent those days at Florida, Tom, after uh, after playing my high school football at Sevier County High School. Just just like this young man right here, it was kind of fun to go down and see Colin Shannon in pregame, redshirt freshman. He was just back there in Sevierville a couple years ago, and same high school Dolly Parton went to, the Smoky Bears. Second and ten, shakes the tackler, extends the play, flags are out, and it's incomplete. I count at least three markers on the play. <laughs> I think there might be a few more that came from up above. That it was a fury of flags, and well, Peyton Wilson right around that football thought he was going to maybe get his hands on it and intercept it. Holding number 55, offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. That against the Danny Rocco's team. Yeah, that was late. I mean, it, it's tough enough just when the, uh, uh, within a normal play. And yeah, I would say that's that's holding. They, they've got those white gloves on. Wear those red gloves. You know, it matches your school color. Maybe you can get away with it every now and then. But that one's just too easy, wasn't it? So that'll put the ball at the 15-yard line for VMI. They have to get to the 35 for a first down. Deep pass with a step and caught near the 40. Egypt Nelson runs under it from Colin Shannon. Wow, what a pretty ball here after the play. Play fake. You got a little bit of pressure late and just lofting it up there. Right for Nelson to run underneath it in stride. A beautifully thrown ball and a great job by Nelson to get steps behind the secondary. 44 yards on that completion and on into NC State territory for the first time today. From the 41 of the pack for the key deaths. Shannon sidesteps a man. Gets rid of it on the sideline, broken up. Sean Brown made the play against Twombly for VMI. And if you're a Wolfpack fan, this is good to see. You want Sean Brown to gain some confidence in games like this. And that right there shows a good feel of the football game and outstanding confidence and ability. Obviously, he can make plays, but he doesn't have all the experience that a Jakeen Harris had or, or an Ingle in the past. That's big. 
The run from Raymond is stuffed. Number no game. Raymond, yes, 68 BMI helmet off. 68 is Cole Holtz, the center. Junior from Richmond, Virginia. He didn't leave the game. He's leaving now. I was wondering what was going on there. You need a new center in this, you know, of course. You got a quarterback center exchange, a new guy. 40th year in coaching for Danny Rocco. First year at VMI. One for six on third down in the game. Got to get to the 31 of the Wolfpack. Back showing blitz and changing it at the line is Shannon. Pass is incomplete. Thorpe couldn't hang on with Kennedy defending. One. VMI changed things up, but NC State didn't. They still brought the heat pressure coming from all over. It was Boykin right there in the face of Colin Shannon. He lets go of that football. So after that big 44-yard completion, nothing to show for it as they try to punt it away. And timeout, North Carolina State. That's their first charge timeout of the half. Media timeout. Interesting here if, if they felt like they might try to that play Verizon game of the week in the ACC on the CW. Quite is the deep net fourth part of the game from Culbreth. And a bounce at the one and go into the end zone. It's a 41 yard punt from Culbreth. And we had a nice punt earlier in the first quarter where he pinned NC State down at the goal line. Got him at the four this time a little bit too strong. And it's back to Armstrong and the pack. So key debt is trying to figure out what exactly a key debt is. Well, it's, it's nobody really knows. <laughs> no, I mean, that's what that's what they'll tell you from VMI. Nobody really knows, but the best guess is that it's just the word cadet, but it's, it was with a little bit of a you know an accent, little uh, you know southern accent, uh, cadet, cadet, I guess. So. The key debts are the mascot of VMI. Hole on the right side up to the 25 in Jordan Houston. What we do know is that Brennan Armstrong is 13 of 16. He's got that TD pass of 16 yards to Bradley Rosner. That's a couple of experienced players collaborating on a TD pass play. It's kind of the ongoing theme in the state of Virginia, though. Everyone's asked what's a Hokie and what's a Wahoo. You know, I guess that's what you when you have a, a sports team in, in Virginia, you got to give them a name to make people think a little bit. Five receiver set now for Armstrong. This on second down. Quick release. First down yardage. KC Concepcion, eight yards on the play. Evan Eller on the tackle for VMI. That's five catches now for KC Concepcion. Good looking receiver for the pack. And good name. You like saying that name, I can tell. You give it a little <laughs> pop. Brandon Armstrong sure likes Concepcion. He'll do it again with five receivers to choose from. It's near the 40 to Rosner for seven yards. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier after the touchdown. Had to go to break, but eight years playing college ball. He missed four seasons with injuries. He's 25 years old now. Bradley Rosner last played at Rice. Caught his 30th career TD pass earlier in the game from Armstrong, who runs it out of bounds to his own bench. Josh Knapp forcing him out after a three yard gain. Enough for a first down for NC State. Vernon Armstrong. From Shelby, Ohio, 6'2, 212 pounds, left hander. 2021 in Virginia had over 4,700 total yards to set a school record. Throws it. That's behind his man. Lassane tried to get back to it. 
incomplete pass for the pack. Hussein did all he could, but that one, that one off the mark, coming out of that break, and nobody, nobody there for Lesane. It would have been a first down and then some. But thrown behind, incomplete ball with 3.16 left in this first half. 161 yards passing for Brennan Armstrong. Provided he stays healthy as the season progresses, he will cross 10,000 career passing yards in the ACC. This time he'll run it midfield. And then step out of bounds inside the 45 of VMI. And a first down scamper for Brennan Armstrong. James, that was 14 yards. Yeah, he, he's able to improvise it, and he, and he can get nifty, too. He, and, and when you have guys blocking down field like Rosner was right there for him, you know, otherwise that would have been a seven-yard game. Instead, it's first down. The pitch to Houston. Armstrong has 44 yards rushing so far in the game. Oliver made the tackle. Houston got five. The NC State team coming off the loss against then number 10 Notre Dame last Saturday had to deal with that weather delay James of almost two hours and they were in that game going into the third quarter trailed by just seven Allen Allen at the 20 and they catch him Michael Allen the sophomore on the run and Allen got 19 yards and Eller made the stop Again, good job blocking this time by the, the big guys getting out there. Anthony Belton just moving some bodies in the patience there of these backs. Great backs have great eyes, great patience. That's Michael Allen right there on that run. Armstrong dumps it off. Houston got wrapped up immediately by Starnes, and that's a loss of two. This VMI team James got a win in early September at home against Davidson 12 to 7 Scored a late touchdown in that game to get the victory against the Wildcats yep. Come from behind they were down Both the games Tenth play of the drive Little dump off 18 yard line or so for Penix That's a short play a three yard play to Penix Graduate student from right here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Sanderson High School. Looks like he's walking over to the sidelines to collect his thoughts. Yeah, I hope he's all right over there. Talked about some of the things he's had to deal with injury-wise earlier. And, and third and eight little things, but Wolfpack like to see a little bit of momentum going into halftime here. Nice touchdown instead of a field goal. Armstrong has all day to operate. Throws it. 10 yard line towards the goal line. First and goal. Finding Julian Gray, who had a big 64 yard catch early in their game for a career high. This one goes for 16. Again, plenty of time for Armstrong. Timeout. All the time. North Carolina State. That's their second charge timeout. All the time he needs and more. Media and getting timeout. it into the hands of the playmaker Gray and the pylon cam shows you just how close he was but no cigars still first in back knocking on the door three of four in the red zone couple of TDs and a field goal looking to add some more to the goal line and in it's Mims his second short TD run of the game Delbert Mims for NC State Well, bring in the big body. Let the fast guys do all the work in the middle of the field and let the Brucer take it in. Touchdown number two for 34. The junior out of Indianapolis having a good time here in the sunshine and trying to make it 31 to nothing before they head into the halftime locker room. Second of the day for Mims, third rushing touchdown of the season, now tied for the team lead 
with Brennan Armstrong, who had three prior to today's game. With 25 seconds to go. about what the ACC has done in the early season, James, against non-conference opponents, and especially against the SEC, 4-1 and one against that conference. Yep, North Carolina with a big win over South Carolina. FSU on opening weekend, the win over LSU was nice. And Miami getting some revenge and getting all over those Texas A&M Aggies down in South Florida last weekend. And then, you know, of those four teams in the in the top 25, the, the next one up is Clemson. They're receiving the most votes, so basically 26 right now. It was a top 10 team that Dave Doran and the Pack saw come in and get a win last weekend in Notre Dame. He said they, they responded all week, had a, a great week of practice, and continue to do that here today. They'll be on the road next week to take on Virginia on Friday night. That's the first of two consecutive Friday night games for NC State on the schedule. Yeah, it was interesting him talking about it. He doesn't love it because those are big recruiting nights. They like to be out there and go to these high school games. NC State won at Virginia back in 2020, 38 21 in the last meeting. With those two teams, Virginia suffered a loss against Maryland last night to start the schedule for the weekend, although Miami had already posted a win against Bethune-Cookman to start the action this week. Miami undefeated. So 31-0 NC State. Colin Shannon. Started the game for VMI after Colin Ironside had started the first two games of the season. Shannon, the redshirt freshman, saw action in three games a season ago. Swinehart will lose yardage on the play. Loss of the state. There was a tie, and that was back in 1921 here in Raleigh. Started playing in 1895, and here we are in 2023. Uh -oh. Gray. Gray down the sideline. Julian Gray. Second half return to the end zone. A flag came out. If it stands, it's 98 yards. There are two flags way back at the 14-yard line as well. Tom, they're way back, and they were way late. It, it's going to be a shame if this does come back because it is completely unnecessary. And what an outstanding run. A kickoff uh, return average. During the return, holding number 83, return team, half the distance to the goal, be first down. Sideline warning, North Carolina State sideline. Sideline warning, North Carolina State sideline. 83 right here, center of the screen. And, and what it was was just a complete blow up for the, the kick cover guy from VMI runs through. There's the sideline warning, very dangerous right there. But Joshua Crabtree, the receiver back there, gets run over and he, and he pulls the the defender down with them as he's going down, so he can't go make the play, but still it was so far behind the play. Mm, very disappointing. I mean, talk about the quick start coming out of the locker room. They, they flipped the script on that one from last week after the delay, and Julian Gray already had a kickoff return average of almost 28 yards of return, second in the ACC, coming back. Worst starting field position of the game. Over, guys. For NC State. Raphael on the carry for eight yards. So NC State on its scoring drives in the first half, James, ran 45 plays. VMI had 24 total plays as a team in the first half. And those scoring drives accounted for three touchdowns and a field goal for NC State.
Raphael stopped on the run. Starnes was there. That's a loss of two. You know, and, and Tom, you know, down 31 to nothing. It's a VMI team. You look at Danny Rocco's defense, and, and we asked him, hey, you've got, you've taken teams like Richmond, teams like Liberty, into VMI before to play. What, what, did, what speech do you give them? He said, hey, these guys are not going to quit ever. Now he's coaching that team, and they're not quitting here in the second half. Continue to play hard, forcing this hey, big third down right here for Brennan Armstrong. Over the middle. Completed to 20. Rooks with a yardage after the catch. Pass to 25 to the 26 yard line at 12 yards. Oh, nice job to pick it up here on this opening drive of the second half and a good job by Rooks to finally secure it after he had it right there on his hip and get a few more yards and move those chains. A line change for VMI, but they'll get off the field as officials have to give them a chance. First catch of the game for Rooks. VMI ready for the run. There is no gain. Raphael again ran into Evan Eller. He's racking up the tackles. Second and ten for the 26, NC State. With 93 yards through the air for Armstrong, trying to add a little bit here. Concepcion tripped up, short of the 30-yard line and three yards. Noel Innocent doing a good job coming around his block, able to get a hand on there. And he's been very active. Some guys defensively over there for this VMI defense. You mentioned Eller. We've seen Dunn quite a bit making plays. Rankin is fun to watch and innocent as well. Guys walked up like they're going to bring a couple on this third and long now. But they'll back out. Armstrong an open man at the 40. That's Rooks to the VMI side of the 50. 24 yards on the strike from Armstrong. Well, Tom, Rooks is just going to set up shop right here, find that little hole in the zone. And you mentioned it earlier in the first half, the quick release, Brennan Armstrong, when he decides he wants to throw that football, it's quicker than a hiccup. And he gets it to Rooks. Rooks turns and burns over the 50-yard line. Armstrong again through the progression. Penix. That's four yards to Penix. Ball with the 44-yard line of VMI. Oliver on the tackle. Four catches now for Penix. Up to 223 yards today for Armstrong. 22 of 26. Trying to get out of the pocket and he can't get away. He's dragged down. Dorian Starnes has played an exceptional game defensively for VMI, and he pulls down Armstrong, loss of five. Yeah, that offensive line has played an exceptional game as well. So Brennan Armstrong perhaps getting a little too comfortable in there in the pocket, and just standing in there flat footed, un unable to get away from the rushing star. And so here's another third down, and just as VMI has had trouble converting third downs, Brennan Armstrong and the Wolfpack, they seem to find a way just about every time. Near the 45-yard line, that's Rooks. All of his catches now coming here in the third quarter, five yards, and Dobson on the stop. So it's fourth down, Armstrong now will trot to the sideline. So he might not get too many chances to see this punting unit on there. And even though 91, our guy Joe Shimko has been out there to snap on extra points and field goal tries. Uh, wanted to get a good shot of this guy. 51st start here today. He snapped every for every kick, every punt since 2019, the beginning of the season. And one more perfect. Just keeps on doing it.
doing great things in the community as well Tony. first punt from the pack and they're able to down it near the five yard line officially at the six after the 39 yard punt from Caden Noonkester. VMI has the ball when we come back. NC State has the lead on the CW. Ball here in Raleigh, North Carolina. So glad you're with us. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Tabitha Turner's on the sidelines. VMI has the football, second level, and up near the 30 for Rashad Raymond for the key deaths. Well, here's the fight. We we said that the key that you better expect it from them for four quarters and quickly over the ball into the air. Last play for 24 yards. This to the 35 yard line. A chance knocks out of bounds. And a five yard play for VMI. Making the trip from Lexington, Virginia. An enrollment just over 1,600 key deaths. A school of history, tradition, military excellence, about 50%. Of the graduates go on to military careers to protect our nation. You can hear the pads popping, James, on a hit there by Wilson. VJ Johnson was the receiver. And with Peyton Wilson with six tackles already in this game. He's gone double digits 16 times in his career and twice already this season. Had 10 against UConn. And 14 last week against Notre Dame back in 2020. He led the ACC in tackles. Timeout, VMI. First charge timeout of the half. Media timeout. Third and short for VMI as we step. Mark Shelton, his leadership on full display this past week on September 11th after he sent out a mass email to all the corps that he has at VMI, who he leads, reminding them of the alumni and service members who lost their lives fighting for our freedom in the war on terror. The letter noted that on that day, 962 cadets will be climbing 100 flights of stairs, which is equivalent to the height of the Twin Towers. And get this, each of the cadets climbing wore the name of one of the 343 three firefighters, 611 law enforcement officers, and eight paramedics who lost their lives 22 years ago defending our freedoms. The players also wore the names of the falling alumni on the back of their helmets during last week's game, guys. Back to you. Yeah, Tabitha, the highest honor that a cadet can earn at VMI right there, number 43, and showing you his true leadership as his team punts it away out on the field. All incredible young men, thank you. Point on the return. Yeah, fantastic story there from the sidelines of Tabitha. Takes a special young man to attend the Virginia Military Institute. Media right now, Trevor, NC State. 31. As we welcome you back to Raleigh, where it's 31 to nothing, the home team. And, and Ripken does more, Tom, than just football, too. As this first down pass is complete, but he. He drops the puck at Kane's games. He's, he's the bat dog for the uh, for the Durham Bulls. And uh, man, he, he's a multi-sport star. I, I wonder if he's met Tuffy. I wonder if they get along. <laughs> Tuffy probably be a little bit jealous of him coming out here, stealing his shine. Ripken's on scholarship here at NC State. Mm. Slipping down near the 30 was Michael Allen. Looked a little disjointed there, James, with a lot of activity in the backfield. Well, it certainly did, but Allen showing great ability to avoid that tackle. Looked like he was going to be dropped for about a five-yard loss. And, you know, he didn't get much out of it because he lost his feet, but showing you how quick and bursty he can be. So it's a third and five. And they're coming up. NC State has been strong in this situation this afternoon. Seven of ten on third down. On its own 29. Wide open man over the middle. The catch was made by Lassane. He hit the turf immediately and might be a little bit short after a four-yard game. A couple of these, these touch passes on these crossers across the middle is, is really where Brennan has struggled a little bit. Threw it behind the guy earlier. This one a little bit too far out in front, almost incomplete. Lucky that the same was able to come up with that one. We've seen him throw some incredible footballs in this game. Knox is deep. Noonkester. Oh. 
And that's Knox up to the 32. 44 yard punt, seven yard return. Payson, Peyton Wilson there on that tackle at the end of that punt. Let's take a look, see how he's doing today. Ain't nothing changed but the weather, and it's a sunny day here in Raleigh. And throwing guys down, he's got seven tackles, eight tackles, make it after that punt already today. Here's a change of direction from Wilson. This was huge because an open receiver down the field that was unable to get the football from Shannon because he got a hand on it and batted it down. Here he comes, and he does such a good job of avoiding blockers, not getting mixed up with those big guys. And proper angles, forcing the quick throw there, putting the pressure on Colin Shannon. Guy that can do it all. And a guy that his defensive coordinator, as he's in on one more tackle, right on cue, but his defensive coordinator, Tony Gibson, said to us yesterday, he said, I've been coaching football for 29 years, and I've never seen anybody play as hard as Peyton Wilson. And that's the ultimate confident to play as hard he and, he and he just he plays his guts out like it's 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 a lot of fun to watch especially you know through the lens of a former linebacker I just love watching him play Thorpe broke a tackle he's up near the marker and that is enough for a first down at the 42 yard line Let's see if I can find for you. Can you pause it right here, guys? Well, I'm sorry. We're taking a different angle. I was going to, no, go ahead. You can go ahead and run it. Uh, but watch Peyton Wilson after a nice job to make him miss. But a nice let job. Go, let go. Also by Wilson to turn and burn and go run him down, which we've seen quite a bit of that over the years. And we, we saw that in the open when we highlighted it, the play he made against Notre Dame. But a nice play for VMI to move those chains, but a second and ten coming up here. Yeah, James, the other thing the coaching staff told us about Wilson is his evolving as a leader because that was not always the case right. for Peyton Wilson in that locker room for NC State, but now he gets this team ready to play every Saturday, especially on the defensive side. Deep pass near the 20, hauled in. That was Egypt Nelson, and a flag is out. What a throw by Shannon. I mean, that was as good as a, a coverage as you'll see. Pass interference. Defense number 25. That penalty declined. Results of the play. First down. You know, Sis doesn't need to hold right here. He's right here in stride, and it's actually both guys that are really fighting there with the hands. Uh, they'll throw the flag on the defense, but Nonetheless, what a throw and what a catch. I mean, we've seen a couple pretty good balls from number one. Just a redshirt freshman, Colin Shannon, the former Sevier County High School, Smokey Bear in high school, playing in just his third start here today. Both of the catches for Nelson were over 40 yards in length. There will be no pass. It is a red swarm on the quarterback. Now there is an NC State player down. It was a loss of 10. Jalen Scott, number two, is the player still on the turf. Gosh, that's that's what you get. That's the thank you get for that nice ball. Oh, my goodness. They were on him in a hurry. And Jalen Scott, hopefully he's okay. The senior from Shelby. Well, Brandon Cleveland is number 44, James. He's 6'4", 300. Yeah. It's a little friendly fire, huh? Landing on top of him, it looked like. There's Colin Shannon, a little slow to get up, and you hear the cheers. Jalen Scott, his, his teammate, sure seemed con concerned at first. Peyton Wilson, but he's he's doing okay now. Hopefully, he just got the wind knocked out of him because that can that can be kind of scary to the individual it's happening to. Anybody that's played a little pickup ball. As a kid knows that feeling, it's, it's not a good one. So hopefully two's okay. Jalen Scott, the senior from Shelby, North Carolina. Please set the play clock to 40 seconds. On that NC State sideline. Again, a week ago, the Wolfpack kept it close against Notre Dame, and then the Irish scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter behind transfer quarterback Sam Hartman who played 
The better part of his career at Wake Forest is that sails out of bounds and a flag comes out. Huh. Nelson was the intended receiver. Now all he does is catch long passes so far this afternoon. Both of his catches have been for over 40 yards. And this could be Brandon Cissay. Defense, number 25. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah. I'm anxious to see this replay here. The first one I could see where they'd throw it. Does he just grab him again? You know, I mean, Rubin is racing. It's, you know, it's, he just kind of bangs him out of bounds. And, you know, that's that's what happens on on each and every snap. You know, you got to put up a little bit of resistance and just helping him out right there. The, the first one I, I agree with, I'm not so sure about that one. I think that's the receiver's job to put up a little bit more force. And, I mean, how many times you see guys get run out of bounds? You know, and that was, that was the case with Notre Dame, actually, last week. The receiver got run out of bounds, and then they lost him when he came back into play. The receiver can't run out on his own, but if he's forced out, he's, he can immediately come back in. That first down for VMI trying to get some points on the board. Overload the left side. Here comes the pressure, and down goes Shannon. Price leads the way. Kennedy's there also. Man, all kinds of red. Boom. <laughs> There's Price with the initial hit. Looked like you had Caden Fordham in there as well. It's a loss of 10 yards. He got second down. Betty. Man. That, they opened up the floodgates, and Colin Shannon's the only one sitting there trying to direct traffic. So a second down and 20 again. They lost 10. Wilson came off the edge. Shannon got rid of it to the end zone. And a touchdown. Egypt Nelson for VMI. 22 yards on the score for the Kedets. There is a flag in the end zone. There are two of them, James. Result of the play or touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 15, offense. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. That is number 15's first unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, twice they went at Sis with the fade route. And, and twice he drew the flag. The one time it was a catch. And this time you have to think, hey, we've got him set up. We got him set up like fastball, fastball. Now, now let's go a little bit of a change. They throw that change up and bring Egypt Nelson back inside. Able to get a little fake. Extra point from Beck is good. Egypt Nelson, three catches, 107 yards in that touchdown. Well, 22 yards from Colin Shannon. And the pressure was coming from Peyton Wilson. Yeah, it was, and he knows he's going to get hit. And he has been hit time after time after time. Smoky Bears, baby. Severe count. That's, that's what it is. That's the Smoky Bear. And just, just tough, tough dudes there from up in East Tennessee. Severeville, Pigeon Forge area. He's got a grandpa that's a, a high school football coach up in Gatlinburg. Colin Shannon does. GP has some pretty good players this year. And Egypt Nelson doing a good job of stretching that into the end zone after the catch, holding on to it. Nelson, guy at coaches will tell you, is one of the best blockers on the team. James, he hadn't had a catch so far in the first two games for VMI. Now he's got three today. And 107 yards. And the TD pass from Colin Shannon of 22 yards. Coach Danny Rocco's team is in the end zone. That's one of the things that NC State said. We want the shutout. We do not want the key debts in the end zone. And yet they pull it off the 22 yard pass play to get some points on the board. 31 7 late in the third 236 to go in our third quarter. And so because of the penalty the kickoff will be from the 20. This is Gray. Gray to the 30 down the sideline for NC State. And all the way to the end zone. 
Julian Gray. 82 yards for the return TD. There you go, big man. Not going to be denied. He ran one all the way back just moments ago, but it was called back because of a holding penalty. And this time, the field is clean. No flags, but a big return for Julian Gray. Huge touchdown run. First and Zonovan Bam Knight. In November of 2021 against Syracuse. That was for 97 yards. This one goes for 82, James. Wow. He's going to be a headache. Just a sophomore out of Charlotte. Look at him. Little, little, little high step and then turns on the speed down the sidelines. No one's going to get him. Not even his teammates can catch no, him. No, <laughs> Oh, man. You know, what a punch to the gut when he, he, he runs the length of the field earlier in the third quarter, only to turn around and to find out it's not going to count. You have to bring it back down. And this time, no flags, nothing but smiles over there. He, he gave a couple of those little high step and turn on the Jets. And that penalty against VMI facilitated that return. Obviously, James, they had to go back 15 yards, kick it from the 20. Gray picks it up with momentum and shoots right down that sideline for the return of 82 yards. Thirty-eight to seven now with 2.25 to go in the third quarter. Passing touchdowns, rushing touchdowns, return TDs, off kickoffs, an interception return for a touchdown. Touchdowns of all sorts of varieties this afternoon for NC State. No return from Knox. ACC football on the CW returns next Saturday as two longtime ACC foes square off. The Yellow Jackets head to Winston-Salem to battle the high-powered Demon Deacons. Georgia Tech, wait for us next Saturday, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, only on the CW. And how about that Wake Forest come from behind Victory James? They were down 17-0 at halftime to Old Dominion. They come back to win it. It, it took a little while for that power to turn on. And ODU, man, they've been some giant killers over the last few years. And they almost got away with another one here today. They're able to do it, and on the road, no less. We were talking about the success, James, of the ACC against the SEC. Wake Forest has one of those wins. They beat Vanderbilt this season. And so now that sets up the matchup with Georgia Tech on the CW next week. Georgia Tech is on the road at Ole Miss for the first time ever in the history of their program. And Georgia Tech and Wake. Remember, James, they played in the 2006 ACC title game, won by Wake 9-6. to This will be their fourth meeting since that championship game when we show it to you and bring you the action of ACC football next Saturday from Winston-Salem. That's a 16-yard play and a first down. Yeah, that'll be next Saturday night, and that'll be a good one. And again, these Keydets continue to scrap a little bit. Good job here, Isaiah Lemon. His first catch of the day, the sophomore out of Sterling, Virginia, hanging on, a second catch, rather, hanging on to it, knowing he's going to take that shot. Great focus. This is a key that team, James, coming off a 1-10 and 10 season a year ago. Did not win a game in the Southern Conference. Back in 2020, they were SoCon champs when they went 6-1 and one in the first year for Danny Rocco taking over this program. Now, it's not going to happen today, but we've seen Rocco, especially when he was the head coach at Richmond back in 2016. They beat Virginia 37-20, to 20, so he has pulled off some upsets in the past. It's unlikely today as we play late in the third. Shannon faking a run, got blasted at the 49-yard line to the turf. Sean Brown 
eight yards for Colin Shannon, who is tough as nails back in that pocket for VMI. In a world where everyone's looking for a shortcut, not at VMI. That's that's what Danny Rocco told us this week. Oh, you got to hang on to that one. Would have been a first down. There's a flag, James. It was VJ Johnson, and now Shannon is How down. About injured VMI player. That is the quarterback, Colin Shannon, the redshirt freshman. Coach Rocco Holy. will come out. Zero, Zero. defense. Ten-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Sean Brown was whistled for the infraction for NC State. Uh, tough kid. He's he's taking some hits here today and popped right back up. And this time, that lower right leg, James. Yeah. Not even a direct hit. It appeared that a couple of players were tangled up. At his feet now he's going to have to Gosh. be helped off by the medical and training staff. It's unfortunate. Played such a great game. Yeah, well, Carter Finley crowd, they appreciate the toughness and giving him a hand as he's helped off. And you hate to see that. Colin Ironside a little bit banged up. Another East Tennessee kid, the junior who started the first two games of the season. Let's see if who will get coming in there next. Yes, yeah, Shannon James, 14 of 24 throwing, 176 pass yards, a touchdown and an interception. And the TD was 22 yards in this quarter to Egypt Nelson. So Colin Ironside unable to go, number two for VMI. So Chandler Wilson, freshman, Straw Plains, Tennessee, Carter High School. We'll see the football field for VMI and hand it off. Five yards. So Colin Ironside remains on the sidelines. He had played for Finley Stadium. NC State has been dominant in this facility. They've won 16 of the last 18 home games. And the numbers favor the Wolfpack through three quarters, James. Yeah, in a big way, and, and still one that stands out to me the most is that third downs and lack thereof when it comes to converting them for VMI, just one of eight. And total plays now at 56 for the Wolfpack. And they've done a great job through the air. Brennan Armstrong He's looked pretty good throughout most of the day. Here's a third down and four, another third down. Coming up. Wilson, edges bend and down goes Wilson. Third sack of the game for NC State. Robert Kennedy, what a day he's had. Loss of eight. Yeah, doing it through the air. It was Kennedy who had the pick six earlier, and this time he runs right through his would-be blocker. That's Swinehart. Takes him with him all the way to the quarterback. And speaking of quarterbacks, here's a good look at Colin Shannon over on the sidelines. He, he was jogging a little bit earlier, we saw during the break. And uh, his teammates consoling him. Hope he's okay. Bounces at the four. Checks up like a sandwich and stops at about the four yard line. Great punt from Colbreth of 40 yards. Own territory. Vernon Armstrong remains in the game at quarterback for the Wolfpack. Play originates from the end zone. The handoff to Mims. Well, we got to tip the cap. This is the second time NC State has had to start inside the five. Colbreth has done a fantastic job. Had one that he hit a little bit too hard a little while ago that didn't end up in the end zone, but for the most part, he's been on the money of putting him down there deep. It's a Wolfpack program. Went eight and five a season ago, four and four in conference play. In fact, they started four and zero last year, James. Finished up at the Duke's Mayo Bowl in Charlotte and a loss to Maryland by four points, 16 12. Back in 2021, nine win season and six and two in the ACC, seven and zero at home. And now Brennan Armstrong added to the mix this season and the reunion with Robert and I. I think a lot of people are waiting 
for those two to galvanize as the season goes along. Now, granted, this is an opponent out of the football yeah, championship here. subdivision, but it has been an improvement today, James. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I'm happy for Brennan Armstrong. You know, we've, we've been around him quite a bit. Let this play go here. Airs it out, down the middle. Incomplete. Ball. Timmons Jr., intended receiver. Crump does a good job going up and, and high pointing that football. You know, and, and this is something, and, and, it, and it's tough. You're, you're going full speed ahead. It's it, it's tough to hit those breaks and, and to go up for it. But, you know, some of those 50-50 balls last week, some of those balls, when they're floating in the air, you got to scrap for it. And doing a good job to knock it down is Crump there. Up the middle, weak spot in that line, detected by Michael Allen. He might have a first down, and he does. Defense, 50 defense helmet off. It's a good-looking running back room, James, with Houston and Allen and Delbert Mims, who has a couple of TD runs today. I think he did get some new snaps for Swan. <laughs> I mean, that's about the third time you've heard the officials say 50's helmet's off. There's Robert and I in the sideline with the sunglasses on. We were talking about him earlier in the relationship going way back with Brennan Armstrong. Fake and toss. Good play by White there, Tom. Just fighting through it, reading it. And you know, just a whole lot of want to to get up the field and turn that ball in and not just turning it in, but but dropping the ball carrier. You know, and it's just what their coach promised us. Danny Rocco said, hey, these guys, they've got grit. They're going to fight. They're going to they're going to fight to the very end and continuing to play hard and trying to get that offense back out on the field, even though they're trailing by 31 right now. Danny Rocco played at Penn State and at Wake Forest for Al Grove. Following his brother's footsteps, he was a great quarterback. That's a completion. Fighting to the 45, Concepcion. VMI side of the 50, KC Concepcion for 31 yards. Well, I mean, we've, we've seen some, some young, talented players on this NC State squad, and, and here's maybe one of the best true freshmen in the nation. Out of Charlotte, KC Concepcion already leading this team in receiving coming in and showing you not only his athleticism, but his fight and his want to as well. He's got seven catches on the afternoon for Concepcion. Kendrick Raphael, nine yards. Add Raphael to that running back room as well. Hunter Robbins is down for VMI at the 40 yard line. Timeout injured VMI player. Media timeout. He'll be escorted to the sideline and will just picked up 21. Super slow mo down the sideline for Raphael. Not this time. Eric Rankin was ready. I think Rankin's always ready. He showed up ready. He made a lot of plays in that those first couple series. That's now seven tackles for Rankin. Eller leads the way defensively with ten for VMI. Rankin number five. Evan Eller number two. That linebacking group. For the five. Down near the two for the Wolfpack. Threatening again. They got seven yards. Kendrick Raphael. Let's we'll see if we can get one more look at this. I want to show you exactly what we're talking about. Just a, a team that continues to to play hard, even though they're not going to go home with a win. Watch, watch right here. The big puller, big offensive lineman come. Boom. Watch him get hit. A little bit tough to see it at that angle. I think it was Ellie that took on Anthony Carter pulling around right there. Just split him up. Third and goal into the end zone. Demarcus Jones finishes off the drive from two yards away.
The offensive line is, has done a good job all day of winning that battle at the goal line when they need one or two to punch go. it in. There you go. They've gotten low and made that push for those backs. All the way, all the way, all the way. So Jones has his first rushing TD of the season. Pack back in the end zone, 45-7 against BMI. This Monday, watch Bank of America. What would you like the power to do? And United Healthcare, there for what matters. Back at Carter Finley Stadium, 58th season of packed football inside this facility. They've won 230 games and poised to win number 231 against visiting BMI. All right, let's take a look at the fourth year starter of the day that he's had here so far. Going to scan that field and look at the protection up front all day long to throw and throw it. He does just threading the needle down the field right in between those defensive players for BMI. Here he's going to have a chance with the new guy in town, Bradley Rosner. And what's going to be coming? This man over there in the corner, little corner route thrown to perfection. Just up there high so the tall guy can go up there and get it. And here's a zone look where he'll have his receiver just set up shot knowing exactly where to hook it up right at the sticks. First down and then some. But the quick release is what stands out so much to me. The 61, James, career TD passes for Brennan Armstrong, including his numbers this season with NC State in his new uniform. You know, Solid day. Got cut off earlier talking about it. You know, it just it was it was a rough year for him last year. Very surprising. And and you'd hate to see a guy that's put so much into the sport of football just go out like that. And I just I wish him the best. He's, he's always been such a great kid to sit down and talk to at media days and when we've gone up to Charlottesville. And, uh, he and Robert and I make a make a, a fun team to to follow. That's for sure. Yeah, he set a school record back in 2021 with 31 touchdown passes, and he threw for almost 4,500 yards. Both of those school records, loss of one for VMI. Okay, so Chandler Wilson. You know, unfortunately, Colin Shannon got hurt earlier, so it's Chandler Wilson now the third-string quarterback at the beginning of the year. From, you, you said straw planes earlier. Okay. Now, our, our spotter is from Strawberry Plains, Tennessee. That's what the locals call <laughs> that's what I, That's how I do it. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure you, I go with you the know locals. that. I like that, though. I like that. Go with the locals. Okay. Here's. Severable? Yeah, that's pretty Severable. good. Severable. That yeah. Pretty good? That's, that's a tough one for a lot of people. They'll go Cedarville. Okay. And, and Maryville is another one. You can tell well, people aren't from East Tennessee if they call it Maryville. Now, he's not coming back in quite yet, James, but that's a good sign to see Colin Shannon up and walking on that sideline. Because mm -hmm. he got hit below the knee absolutely and that and that interception you know you, you hate to see that on his on his stat sheet here for today went through the receivers hands and that was the interception return for a touchdown but look, you passed that you passed the test yin's yin's doing all right up here <laughs> that was last week jam in pittsburgh in pittsburgh minus the s back the other way reversing field it's coy Popped out of bounds, short of midfield. 54 yards on the punt, 27 yards on the return. Jalen Coit. Live Golf returns to the CW next weekend in Chicago, where Brooks Kepka, Phil Mickelson, Cam Smith, Dustin Johnson, and Bryson DeChambeau lead a team battle for $50 million in prize money. Live Golf, Chicago, next weekend, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on the CW. 45-7, five and a half minutes to go in regulation. Scores, over, over! Ethan Rhodes has come in at quarterback for NC State, number 13. It's a four-yard play. You know how they sing Wagon Wheel in between the third quarter and fourth quarter here at Carter Finley? I've never heard that song before, Jimmy. Yeah, you have. <laughs> Darius Rucker. I like the Rucker it, version. Yeah, well, I do too, and Since he's a South song. Carolina guy. You yeah. live in South Carolina. Of course. You know that. But they should they should have a tradition. When Rhodes comes in to clean things up, they should sing Take Us Home, Ethan Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna sing that? 
You everybody. Got a, you got a particular artist? No, I'm saying everybody in the stadium. Oh, okay. Take us home, Ethan Rowe. I knew you were going to sing it. <laughs> I'm going to get Tabitha on here to sing with me before too long. They're singing the praises of Brennan Armstrong for sure today, James. 264 yards passing, a touchdown pass. 27 of 32, hanging out on the sidelines, just chilling after what will be the second win of the season for NC State. And maybe, James, you can speak to the confidence. And now, again, I understand that VMI comes out of the football championship subdivision from the Southern Conference. But Armstrong looked very comfortable, poised, under control, and he threw a couple of passes early in this game where he threaded it between defenders. Beauties. I mean, just, just beautifully thrown footballs. And, and and not just, oh, they're all just bullets. I mean, he, he can, he's got that quick release. He can throw it strong. He can thread that needle, but he also has a pretty touch pass, as we saw displayed in the corner route to Bradley Rosner. Rosner's been a nice addition. He's, he's had a nice start. The pass play between the two was in the first quarter of 16 yards. Armstrong and Rosner. Between them, James. I mean, Rosner's looking at his eighth year. Yes, he had several injuries. Armstrong, five seasons at Virginia. Mm -hmm. 2020 was a challenging year for everyone, certainly. No snap, no snap, no snap. No snap. Just shy of the 30, Raphael, and five yards. So NC State, we mentioned, kind of a quirky schedule coming up, James, as far as those Friday night games are concerned. They're at Virginia. So that will be for Armstrong, a return to Charlottesville. Yeah. That's a night game on Friday, 7.30 start. They haven't played since 2020. And then the next home game is September 29th. That's also a Friday. 7 o'clock against Louisville, which has come no, out no, the no, gate no, strong no, no. in the ACC. So here's what it looks like overall. Then you got to travel to Duke, which had that impressive victory in the first weekend of the season against Clemson. Hey, they're doing it again today. They're up big on Northwestern. Looking good still. And then Clemson comes to town. That's always a fun one. The, the textile bowl. Miami, one of those four ranked teams in the ACC. Florida State, the highest ranked team in the conference, up to third this week for Mike Norvell. Well, they had a scare up on yeah. Chestnut Hill today. They were able to get out. But there's a lot of emotion behind that game for Boston yes. College, the red bandana game. Wells Crowther. Honoring the 9-11 hero Wells Crowther, BC grad. You know, I'll be anxious to watch, you know, along with my Florida Gators playing the Tennessee Volunteers tonight. I'll be anxious to watch wait, wait, wait. Phil Dracovic and, and hope that he can bounce back. We had him last week against Cincinnati. Uh, speaking of transfers and Boston College, and uh, they've got a big one in the backyard brawl. Hopefully they can take down West Virginia. Whom they beat a season ago, and that's first down yardage to the 15 in the dwindling sunshine of Raleigh, North Carolina. That was a nine yard play, Raphael. A lot of good reps for players on both sides of the football. VMI next Saturday, they're at home to take on Wofford from Spartanburg, South Carolina. That's the first SOCON game of the season, 1.30 p.m. start at home for VMI. Rafael's up to 85 yards. This could be a negative play here, though, back to the 20. That was Jones, who had a touchdown run of two yards in this quarter. So Coach Rocco will take inventory of the effort of his team today. They got in the end zone. But the Wolfpack James just too much as the final seconds tick off the clock.
from Carter Finley Stadium, and NC State is now two and one on the season, 45-7 over BMI.